So I deleted Facebook from my phone. Let's talk about it. So a couple of weeks ago, I deleted the Facebook app from my phone and here's why. I've been a Facebook user for many years. I think from quite near the beginning, someone sent me an invitation. I didn't really understand it. Clicked on it. This was the days before there were any ads or anything like this. And also back in the day, um, it just showed you all your friends' stuff and showed your friends all your stuff. There was no curation. Fairly quickly, I found Facebook very useful for connecting to distant relatives and old friends I'd lost contact with. And I have to say, in the early days, it was fun. But Facebook today is very different from those early days of Facebook. First of all, you no longer get to choose which post you see. Facebook decides whose post you see. And not only that, they decide which of your posts they show to other people. So say you've got 100 friends on Facebook, maybe 200, and you post something, there's probably only five or six people are going to see that post. But one of the main reasons I deleted Facebook was that I noticed something and that was an addiction. As regular viewers on this channel will know, I'm in a process of trying to get rid of all addictions. Nine years ago, I quit caffeine. Uh, over six years ago, quit alcohol. I've intermittently quit refined sugar, but that's one I struggle a bit with. That comes and goes. And those are the three addictions that I'd noticed. And those were the three things that I wanted to get rid of. I want to live a life that I don't need to escape from. I want to enjoy my life. But I had a really weird moment a few months back. I remember being a little boy and I remember my mum and dad. And the first thing they always did when they woke up in the morning was reach on to the bedside table to get the cigarette packet and to light a cigarette. And when I was a little kid, I didn't really think anything about that because most people we knew smoked. And so it wouldn't have been unusual that people wake up and have a cigarette. And of course, the reason my mum and dad were reaching for the cigarettes on waking up was because they were addicted to nicotine. So I had this really weird moment a few months back when I noticed that every time I wake up, I pick up my iPhone and tap on the Facebook app and scroll Facebook for about an hour. And that was every morning. It was like, this is what I do when I wake up. I have to go on Facebook to see what's happened. That to me sounds very similar to my mum and dad's addiction with nicotine. Got to have that first thing before we can start the day. And that got me thinking about how addictive Facebook ads are. And we know smartphones and apps are very addictive because <laughs> whenever you meet up with people, Quite often you end up just sat with someone who's looking at their phone. They're not engaging with you as a person. So yeah, there's a couple of things. One is that you post stuff, but nobody's seeing that apart from a handful of people that Facebook decides should see that. And also, I'm not seeing what my relatives and friends are posting unless Facebook decides that I should see that. And then obviously the addiction thing is something I really don't like. But having done a bit of research, I've discovered that Facebook employ people called attention engineers. And what their job is, is to keep you on the app, to stop you going away to do something else. Not only that, but these attention engineers have studied the uh, scenario around Las Vegas slot machines and how the Las Vegas casinos keep people at the slot machines putting money in. And it's like, you imagine the fruit machines, or I don't, I've not got it this time, but I'll just go around one more time and maybe I'll win something. And it's that kind of psychology that Facebook have programmed into their app. How many times have you been scrolling up Facebook? I'll just have a look. There, didn't, there wasn't anything on there before of interest, but I'll just have a look because this time there might be something really funny or something really interesting. And you're doing that because the programmers, the attention engineers, have made you do that. On top of that, Facebook is not free. Now, I know you don't pay any money to use Facebook, but if you're not paying for something, then you're the product. And Facebook is scraping all the data, not only of stuff you put on Facebook or when you're in the Facebook app, but they connect to the rest of your phone and they scrape everything off your phone, text messages and all sorts of stuff. That's how they know what to sell you. Even when you click off Facebook and go somewhere else and do an internet search, Facebook is still tracking you, following you and taking down data of exactly what you're looking for. 
Another thing is it's called social media, but I'm finding increasingly it should be called anti-social media. Because when you meet up with people in real life, a lot of the time people are scrolling their phones rather than engaging with you. I've gone to the trouble to go into town, meet you at a coffee shop or something, and I don't look at my phone when I'm with someone. If you see me do that, you can correct me, but I purposely put that out of the way. When I'm with someone, I'm with someone. But increasingly, people are getting all sorts of notifications and pings and dings, and it's very difficult not to pick up your phone and start looking at what that is. And once you're on the phone and you've checked a few things, you'll see another notification. Before you know it, you sat there with a friend, ignoring them and scrolling up your phone and fiddling about on your phone. The other thing that really started to irritate me that almost every other post is an advert. Certainly, if you, you know, you can get two posts that are proper posts, and then the third one or the fourth one is always an advert. There's almost more adverts than posts. Another thing is, a lot of my friends have got clones. I get a friend request from someone I'm already friends with on Facebook, and very quickly you find out someone's gone on their profile, downloaded their profile picture, and then use their name to set up another Facebook account and then send all your friends a, fa a Facebook friend request. And before you know it, people can be finding all sorts of stuff out and maybe scamming your friends. Another major negative is that social media in general and smartphones in general, um, they fragment your attention and concentration. I don't know if you found this, but sometimes I've found when I'm trying to do a job that requires long-term concentration, I can't concentrate for as long. And I'm sure that's um, a symptom of using a lot of social media because it fragments your attention. You're dealing with lots of little things. So when you get to do something that requires much longer concentration, your brain's been rewired to just look at things for a few seconds. And the biggest reason why I've deleted Facebook off my phone is it's a big, big waste of time. The average user of Facebook is scrolling for 213 hours a year. That's more than nine and a half days a year. Imagine you decided to take 10 days off work and you all you did for those 10 days was just scroll Facebook. How many of us often say that if we just had a bit more time or an extra day in the week, we could achieve something that we're struggling to achieve? Well, if you delete Facebook, and certainly if you delete Facebook off your phone like I have, you could have nine and a half extra days a year. Now, most people I speak to can't imagine deleting Facebook, but here's a news flash. For most of my life, and most of your life, there was no Facebook. We got along fine. Life still worked. The world didn't end. There was no Facebook and we managed to live our lives. And from this side of the decision of deleting Facebook off my phone, I can tell you that life goes on without Facebook. Now, why do I say I've only deleted off my phone? Have I not deleted my account? As of yet, no, I haven't deleted my Facebook account. If I want to do something on Facebook, I have to now switch on the big desktop computer. I have to go into a different room and I have to let that fire up. So obviously, since I've deleted Facebook off my phone, I haven't been on Facebook because if I'm sat there thinking, oh, I wonder if there's anything on Facebook, I'm not really going to go to another room, switch on a computer, wait for that to fire up, start the browser and log in, and then just to see a load of nonsense. I'm not going to do that. I knew I wouldn't do that. The convenience was it was on the phone. If you get bored for a minute, it's just too easy to click the app. So that's why I deleted it from the phone. And that means I've still got all the contacts but I'm not doing Facebook every day. In fact, the last two weeks, I haven't done Facebook at all. Now, you may have seen this video in one of my Facebook groups and clicked on it from there. So you may be thinking, well, it's still on Facebook. Yeah, on the desktop computer, I can still access it and I can post things like this video. And that's mostly what I would use Facebook for. So at the moment, that's how I'm keeping it. I can go and post something, but I'm not looking at Facebook. If somebody wants to meet, I'm happy to meet in person or take a phone call. 
there's email, there's texts and all sorts of other ways of communicating. We don't need to give Facebook all our data. So how do I start the day now? Instead of doing the addictive thing of reaching for the phone and scrolling Facebook, I actually have a book that I'm reading on the bedside table and I'll read a chapter or part of a chapter of a book as I wake up first thing. And this has been great because it's not like scrolling at all. It's actually you're learning something or following a story while you're reading the book. It's a completely different experience. And I have to say my concentration has definitely improved and I don't really think about Facebook in the day. In fact, actually I had to really think about Facebook to just jot down some notes for this video. But other than that, I haven't for the last two weeks even thought about Facebook or what's on Facebook or what Facebook's doing or what people are doing on Facebook. It's like most addictions, once you stop and walk away from the thing you're addicted to, the desire goes. So that's me. This isn't an instruction for what you should do, but I'll be interested in your thoughts. Do you feel addicted to social media? Do you find them depressing or, you know, have negative effects? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Or have you never been on Facebook? Or have you deleted your social media? Let us know. Let's start a conversation in the comment section below. I'm not planning to go back to having Facebook on my phone again and actually I've deleted Twitter off my phone as well. Anyway, thanks for watching today. I hope this has been helpful and given you some food for thought. And, um, you know, are you working through your addictions to get free and just live a free life, a life that you're not looking to escape from with addictions? Let me know. Anyway, good to see you and let's talk again soon. Rhine sings by the linden tree, his melody is calling me. There's a sweetheart yearning for me day by day.